We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Welcome to the seminar Internet of uh, Behavior, a new way of thinking. Hello, it's great to be part of the Internet Governance Forum 2021. My name is uh, Dominika Kturowska Stuchalska, and I'm director of the Center Mixer of Smart Technologies, the co organizer of this uh, seminar. And I'm co hosting it with uh, Maciej Hajnowski. Yes, hello. Thank you, Dominika. And as Dominika said, my name is Maciej Hajnowski. I'm program director of the Center for Ethics of Technology at Humanitas Institute, the second institution co organizing this. Uh, wonderful event and we're really glad to be here to be part of this of this event. Um, Thank you Maciek. Uh, uh, well, uh, big thanks uh, to our panelists and uh, registered participants and we are very privileged to have excellent guests uh, with us this evening. It's my great pleasure to uh, welcome and uh, introduce Zofia Dzik. Impact Investor, Founder and uh, CEO of uh, Humanites Institute, Human and Technology. Uh, hello, Zofia. Uh, thank you. Hello, Dominika. Yes. Hello, everyone. Our, hello. Our second panelist is Robert Kroplewski, Planet Potentiary of Minister of Digital Affairs for Information Society, expert of Future Industry Platform State Treasury Foundation. Hello, Robert. Welcome. Good Great morning, to be here with you. everybody. Oh, nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Okay. Uh, our next uh, fantastic um, uh, expert is Katarzyna Palivoda, head of Emerging Market Central and Eastern Europe at Meta, previous Facebook. Uh, hello, Katarzyna. Good evening. Great to be with you here. And uh, our another guest is Dr. Katarzyna Sanak, Assistant Professor at the Department of Marketing, Krakow University of Economics. Uh, hello, Katarzyna, great to be with you here. Hello, and thank you for having me here. Very nice to see you all. Thank you. Okay, and uh, the next our expert is Kinga Stupczyńska, Assistant Professor at the Department of Marketing, University of Lodz, PR and Marketing Director in Marinex International. Uh, hello, Kinga, it's nice to see you. Hello, good evening. Thank you for having me. It's a great privilege to be here with you. Uh, fantastic. And uh, well, uh, before we start, uh, together with Maciek, we've uh, prepared a short introduction to the topic, uh, because uh, today we uh, will be talking about uh, Internet of uh, Behavior, uh, which is closely connected with the increasing uh, popularization of the Internet of Things and uh, the systematic increase in the number of devices connected uh, to the network generates access uh, to a huge amount of uh, data. And well, it's uh, estimated that the number of uh, such devices uh, will be around, well, 31 billion globally in just four years. Uh, and uh, well, uh, the internet of uh, behavior is a solution uh, that combines the technological potential of IoT uh, related to the collection of, uh, of data and uh, the achievements of behavioral uh, psychology, uh, allowing uh, us um, to explain and understanding data. And uh, well, the potential of um, of IOB is, uh, is large and uh, behavioral data is uh, collected uh, by social networks, online stores, toy assistants, wearable technologies, and many, many uh, others. And thanks to IOB, business is uh, a business has uh, reliable uh, knowledge about uh, consumer attitudes. Um, as a result from our real behaviors. And on the other hand, uh, consumers receive information that information that um, speeds up uh, our uh, decision-making process and depends uh, our experience. Wow, it's wonderful. But Maciek, what about the challenges? 
Yeah, I'd like to add a couple of things uh, to what uh, Dominika have just said, and I'll focus on, on, on threats, not on advantages, uh, so that we could better grasp the, the multidimensional um, uh, facet of, of IOB challenges. I'd like to point to some problematic features of the IoT itself, because IOB is, is to a certain extent part of, of, of IOB, no, IoT, sorry. So first of all, uh, I would like to just to mention ubiquity or omnipresence, which simply means that the, uh, all the devices, internet connected devices, smart devices will be everywhere around us, both in, in public and private uh, spaces. This is the first feature. Another thing is ultra connectivity. Uh, it means that the large number of connections of things and people will generate enormous volume of data, which uh, will or can be used to increase the scale of the surveillance capitalism, as, as Shoshana Zubov uh, puts it. The third thing is uh, miniaturization or invisibility. Uh, all the IoT devices will become smaller and smaller in time. And as a result, uh, it, can, it can result, in fact, in, in, avo in avoiding uh, audits or, or control. But there are also other characteristics. I would like to uh, say a couple of words. Uh, IoT can be used for public good, for example, to steer people towards socially uh, desirable behaviors like, for example, uh, pro-ecological uh, initiatives. But it'll, it can also be used to increase the engagement of users, of consumers, and uh, this in turn may increase their vulnerability or exposition to new marketing practices. And uh, this was very quick overview of some of the possible problems we, we might have with IoT. And I am sure that we will discuss them in further details during our panel. So now, without further ado, um, I think it's time to start our discussion. And Dominika, I hand the, the, the stage over to you. Go ahead. OK, uh, thank you, Maciek, uh, very much. Uh, but before we start, some practical details. Uh, at first, uh, we are going to have a 30 minutes discussion and then about 10 minutes for questions uh, from the audience. And uh, you can write your questions uh, in chat uh, all the time. And uh, well, uh, now let's start with a question uh, to all participants. And uh, uh, everybody knows uh, that a lot of negative uh, opinions uh, have arisen uh, around the IOB. And um, well, in your opinion, is it the result of a misunderstanding of its uh, potential uh, or maybe it's a consequence of uh, unethical uh, behavior in the context of data and or uh, privacy, which we have seen in uh, recent years? And uh, Robert, I will start with you. What's your opinion? Well, thank you for the question. Thank you for the time uh, first. I didn't expect that. that. Um, but um, that question is um, put on the table uh, big tension among the um, usage of uh, internal of behavior and the ethical challenges uh, in, in front of that uh, kind of technology. And um, maybe uh, it's worth to say uh, now, uh, even business model. Uh, it still depends uh, how, how we use that kind of business model and how we engage the internet of behavior into that business mo model. And uh, as we can observe with different technology, uh, technology is still neutral and we, uh, it, it is um, the aim and the result is depending on our usage as a, as a company or our usage as, a, as, a, as a users. And uh, of course, um, this, uh, it is a mixture uh, between the good results and exploitation of uh, internet of, of behaving and um, uh, fears of um, uh, many users. Uh, if we see the, the actual state of um, privacy, we of course uh, have many uh, afraidness. Uh, and in, in, in that situation, uh, uh, the world uh, waked up uh, because of the topic of artificial intelligence. And uh, lastly, 
uh, it was very historical moment um, and uh, that kind of organization like UNESCO, for example, and uh, Council of Europe approved first um, special uh, legal mechanism, uh, uh, which um, uh, is dedicated to empower human dignity. And if we put the human dig dignity in the center of, of internet behaving, uh, everything could be managed uh, on, on the beneficial side of, of, of that kind of methodology, that kind of business model. And uh, I still believe uh, that that kind of uh, value, it's uh, root and even aim of that, uh, that um, challenge, challenging um, business model dedicated to internet of behavior. Uh, behaving, um, it's, uh, if we, if we uh, try to measure the behaving uh, of internet, the behaving of people, um, it is, um, of course, we need to think uh, from the visual audio uh, sources and the body sources and the, the mobility and, and like that. And if, uh, if we um, could uh, produce some good framework, how to manage uh, the context among, uh, among uh, the, the ethical value, but or, or, um, uh, the more specific business uh, usage, that uh, on my opinion, uh, finally, we can um, engage that kind of business model for beneficial uh, side of people. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sofia, what do you think about it? Um, Dominika, I think that, uh, you know, as Robert was saying, that, of course, technology is neither good nor bad. It's a question what we do with it. And uh, if you ask the question whether uh, this opinion is uh, a question of uh, or a result of misunderstanding or um, actually it's arisen from uh, uh, misusing of some data or an ethical behavior, I could uh, simply answer that it's uh, pretty well earned by giving uh, at least two examples. First of all, uh, in the recent years, we've seen a lot of uh, um, cases where internet of uh, things were used actually as a gate for hacking internal systems. Uh, and uh, we could uh, see pretty well that, uh, uh, that IoT was in a way the weakest link of uh, ICT. Now, this is the first uh, uh, element to, to make the answer short and the, give the, the chance to um, so some uh, other opinion. And the, the second thing is uh, actually what uh, you were mentioning and also Maciej uh, was mentioning uh, while referring to uh, Shoshana Zubo, that uh, um, AI, IoT, it uh, actually is, uh, uh, created a lot of small gates for uh, an ethical uh, data collection. And it's not only the, the question of many devices that we know that uh, look pretty innocent for uh, voice controlling, like uh, TV or uh, some other home assistants or uh, uh, voice assistants in the, in the phone, but also going uh, as far as toys for children. Sushana is giving a lot of examples from even well-known uh, worldwide uh, toys producers uh, and I think that still uh, very few parents are aware when they are playing with the innocent toy, uh, they are not aware that uh, all the conversation is uh, that uh, it's going around the toy in the house. It's recorded and kept somewhere in the unknown place uh, in the world. Um, then I think that we are, it's great that we have this discussion because, uh, and also, uh, this is the reason why we are talking so much about the ethics in the technology, because the pandemic uh, even speeded up the uh, the speed uh, speeded up the technological revolution, and uh, we know that the legislation or regulations uh, usually don't uh, follow so quickly um, uh, the changes in the innovation. But we are um, facing the challenge that the humanity or the world was facing in the beginning of when we had to um, design actually the new road sign system. And now I think that we are in the similar uh, situation where we have to design the system of this uh, warning, uh, prohibition, uh, uh, but uh, also the mandatory signs. Okay, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, Katarzyna Poliwoda, uh, 
Kashu, uh, what is your opinion about ILB? Yeah, like, you know, referring, thank you so much. So referring to your question, you know, I, I'm representing business here, obviously. So, you know, from the business standpoint, and, you know, starting from us as a company, I, uh, I think what, you know, coming back to what uh, Zofia has just mentioned, we pitch for the creating sort of standard roles of the internet. We, we, we do believe it's badly needed right now because we need to, you know, exactly because everything we have is you know, eventually 30 years old. Now, if you think about, you know, coming back to us as a business and our obligations, we definitely believe we need to improve people's, you know, awareness, understanding and, and control over their data. Yeah. And that's the ongoing process. That's not something that will end eventually because that's also the ongoing education we need to do for you know everyone, you know, three billion plus people using our platforms. Now I think you know there's three rules there though that you know we should not kind of you know forget from that perspective. And you know starting from that it's people who should own their data. Yeah, so from that perspective, if I own my data as Katarzyna Palivoda, I can also access it, edit it, delete it, or move it somewhere else. And then, you know, eventually the companies like ours and everyone else should be simply hold, held accountable for, you know, sticking to that rules. And again, we need the legislation to follow, the global one, because, you know, internet is global, obvious to say, uh, to help us to do that. Because, you know, on the industry side, uh, we, we can obviously involve as an industry, but we need both academics and regulators to actually help us to get there from that perspective so that you know people and you know our consumers, our users feel most more safe. And then you know, eventually over the last years, I think we've all learned our lesson on the privacy overall, you know, from the business standpoint. And again, uh, you know, Robert mentioned business models. So you know, our business model is ads. Yeah, we sell ads. <laughs> so from that perspective, you know, we do believe that both advertising and privacy can go together and that you know can actually boost uh, economy because why because it's actually allowing you know the SMB sector to enter that advertising that was only allowed for the biggest companies and then they can also effectively compete with you know their biggest competitors in a way so yeah so we do believe it goes together but again it's all around the rules of people owning their data of you know eventually and it, be, being able, apologies, being able for them to access it, and for us as a company, the obligation that we should educate everyone on how to do that from that perspective. Okay, uh, Kinga, uh, do you agree with it? Of course, and as a marketer, of course I can, I shouldn't, and I cannot uh, look at this uh, topic uh, in a different way, like from the perspective of the client. And on one hand, the customer is a person who loves to share his life, for example, on social media. On the other hand, he values privacy and threats and the potential evaluation of it almost in an attack of himself. And that's uh, the problem that we have, that we love to share the information. But on the other hand, when we hear that the company is collecting data about us, um, we feel not comfortable. That's why data management these days is a very delicate subject. And many times obtaining them it takes place almost without the client's conscious knowledge about this. And this is the problem. And that is why it is so important for the future of the internet of behavior to build customer awareness uh, in this area and educate them. How can we help them? What can we do for them? And how can we improve the life of the customer? with the information that we got from the market. Okay, uh, we must be safe and we must educate. And uh, well, uh, Katarzyna, Asanak, uh, Kasio, what with this education uh, about IOB and what's your opinion about uh, internet of behavior? First of all, I would um, try to compare this problem with the classical information asymmetry. So you all probably know Akerlof's market of lemons. Yes, he was talking basically about the economics, but I think that we can do a copy paste and try to analyze this problem at the same level. So obviously we have a situation where we have two actors, the consumer and the company that owns the data about the consumer. And obviously the consumer knows more. <laughs> the, con the consumer knows less and the business knows more. Consumer very often doesn't really understand the process, doesn't even know that it's being tracked. 
The thing is that, well, uh, there is no clear solution for that. And obviously that won't be easy. I see definitely three uh, steps or three parallel tracks that we should follow. The first one has been already mentioned. So the legislation, but as you also said, uh, it's not that easy. Yeah? Usually the innovation is faster and then all our government uh, and all of the regulations and legislation processes take longer, not only in Poland. Yeah. So the first path is the legislation. The second path is definitely transparency. But the thing is that, well, for transparency, the customer needs to be at least aware of the fact what he or she could, should double check. What I mean is that very often, well, consumers are able to get this data even right now that, well, they are being behaviorally tracked or targeted or whatever, but they simply don't know where to find it. Yes. So that's the second thing. They, they, agree, they agree on all of the agreements uh, without reading them because they're too long and the letters are too small and so on and so on. Yes. So here, I think that the third path, but this one that we have, should start with, is the education. And the problem with the education is that, well, in Poland, and I think that in many other countries is the same because, well, we work on this with my with my colleagues all over the, uh, the Europe, and the education starts too late. I mean, our customers are very often children aged two or three when they start to watch um, uh, Peppa the pig <laughs> on their iPads. Yeah, they're being tracked from the very, very early childhood. Very often, parents don't really uh, know how it happens. And uh, yeah, there's no one who uh, is able to share this knowledge with, with either with the parents and either with the children. And what I, what I can actually say is that, well, last year we had a project at the university. Uh, we were doing the, some sort of the third mission. So the educational program for children at the primary school. And we had classes about the uh, fact checking and the classes about uh, well, targeting, generally speaking, yes. Yeah? So trying to explain what is the retarget ad and so on and so on. And the funny thing happened because first of all, we were supposed to work with children only, age nine, 12. So we had classes for kids. Then we had classes, then teachers asked us to have a lecture for teachers. So we had the lecture for teachers. And then finally we were invited by a parents board to have another lecture for parents, yes. Yeah? So the need is huge, yeah. But I don't really see any, gap for this education in formal programs yes and i think that well this is pretty important yes that we are not teaching about uh, these uh, rules um to these people who are just becoming to be consumers yes so so i definitely agree that the problem exists that the technology is neutral but there is a moral hazard so obviously if someone can 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 use the data probably will use it because uh, well at the very end marketing uh, we are still working in profit margins and conversions yes so we don't really worry that much about the social outputs yeah thank you Okay, now uh, I must ask you about uh, the future and, uh, well, uh, of course, in uh, your opinion, will the IOB develop faster in, in any areas or uh, market sectors uh, and will it be associated with any particular risk? And uh, now I will start uh, with you, Kinga. As you know, knowledge is a power. So knowledge about the customer will certainly be the strength of the brand. In case of the IOB, we are talking about the highest level of knowledge. Uh, it is difficult right now to imagine industries that will not want to build their competitive advantages based on the full information about the customer behavior. And at this, le uh, this level, uh, that was unable for a few years ago. So uh, like when we look at customer a few years ago, we just put ask them the questions. Right now, we know exactly how they can behave. We know, for example, um, when they return at home, we know uh, did they exercise or not. We know are they hungry or not. And um, this knowledge is like uh, particularly uh, one of the most important factors for the companies. And right now, from my point of view, the areas of uh, IOB and uh, will be for sure um, all the areas in the beauty categories, beauty sectors, uh, for sure, IT and health. Health is a part of the market that I'm taking and dealing with uh, every day. 
working for the pharmaceutical company. And I know how important it is to know uh, all, all the stuff about the customers. And I also know that uh, when we have a good conversation, like a good relationship with the customers, we can like uh, connect both the internet of behavior and the information from the customer. So for me, these are the uh, areas that I think um, that uh, internet of behavior will rise. Okay, health, beauty, and uh, IT. Katarzyna Sanak, uh, do you think uh, that uh, uh, that IOB will uh, develop faster in these areas? Well, I think that, well, probably the, all of the activities of daily living, so ADLs will be the first, yes, just because uh, uh, we always, always, as a human beings, always loved psychotests and always wanted to discover ourselves better. And I think that, we'll, that the tracking of ADLs gives us this opportunity, yeah. So, so I would say that uh, this, this sector would be the first one. Healthcare, of course, yes. And this is actually this bright side of the internet of behavior, yes, yeah? that that actually can help a lot. Uh, later, I think that also the education is a um, sector that there might be a great significance of internet of behavior, especially that nowadays we can see more and more people um, learning on distance, learning remotely. And I think that, well, this experience of, of the online learning is still very, very flat. So I would assume that probably tracking some sort of the, of the data might help in, the, in, in better performance. And uh, yes, so I would say that probably these areas, but from marketing perspective, uh, all kinds of social commerce uh, will be in the great usage of internet of behavior just because that is the place where the profit will come from. Yes, so, so and that actually happens already. Yeah? We, well, I'm always trying to explain to my students that, well, we used to have no data in marketing. Yes, we had such huge problems to measure the efficiency of the campaigns in offline marketing and so on and so on. And right now in online marketing, we have too many data, yes? And we don't really know how to analyze it. So obviously this switch probably will change soon. Yes, we'll be better and better in working with the big data. And I think that the social commerce, e-commerce in general will be the first one to benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Katarzyna Polipoda, uh, Kasiu, uh... What uh, sectors, uh, what do you think? I would actually agree with cash on commerce and social commerce. But if I would be more specific, I would definitely bet on health, well-being. And that's, again, very, my very personal bet from that perspective. Uh, you know, again, you know, coming back to the risks is, you know, there's simply the massive risk of people not being aware that this, you know, data might be used somewhere. So, again... You know, ours as a business job to you know to educate them, but then the question is if everyone will be doing it. Okay, uh, well, uh, Matko, uh, it's time for your question. Yeah, it's my turn. Thank you. My uh, my question is um, legislation related, so it goes to Robert Kroplewski. and the question is the European Commission proposal on the AI regulation, so called AI Act introduces various degrees of risk, including the unacceptable risk. And uh, the question is, do you believe that we can also expect the IOB to be banned from certain applications in the future as it is now with regard to AI? Well, thank you, Maciej, for, for the question. Um, I believe, <laughs> I was simply <laughs> answering for the question, but. Uh, that work is not um, realized now. Um, European Commission, if you talk about uh, European Union, started to work on the Privacy Act uh, new, new proposal. And from that perspective, we uh, rather could ex expect uh, the new regulation. And that kind of, the, the, the same regulation as artificial intelligence proposal um, is not developed uh, still. But I um, think that um, that will be very good benchmark for any new um, uh, regulation related to the Internet of, of behavior. And it is a proper uh, benchmark, in my opinion, because still we talk about the privacy, still we talk about the surveillance. And for example, if I, if I could jump from the European Union uh, to the uh, um, Council of Europe, 
the mass surveillance is uh, subject of uh, of the of the ban of that uh, of that um, application. If uh, and and the uh, social scoring uh, re re realized by a um, private company also, if uh, that kind of um, new samples um, appeared. Uh, it is very um, quick and, and short distance to, to, to produce a new proposal for internet of uh, behaving, on my opinion. And, and it, on my opinion, also, it will be good uh, to, to take this kind of um, developing uh, in next year even, because um, uh, um, I said so many years ago, uh, just now, uh, about the uh, dopamine economy. The dopamine economy is still related to, to internet of, uh, of behaving. If I could uh, uh, jump to the previous question, uh, I would like to add, and because of the dopamine ec economy, entertainment sector. And, and everything will be entertainment, as, and we will be entertainment subject. And finally, the, the mass, um, the, the huge risk is to, to break the, our autonomy. And uh, if, 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 if it is that kind of risk, the regulation um, um, is uh, very needed. But um, no regulation uh, help, help, could help us if we don't develop the tool some very practical mechanism uh, which can um, um, support people. And for, for, for example, and only to mention, uh, Poland uh, jumped to the, um, uh, joined to the Global Partnership of Artificial Intelligence Alliance uh, last December. And uh, in that alliance now um, work uh, on special mechanism, uh, pri privacy enhanced, uh, uh, use, using privacy, uh, privacy enhanced technologies. And uh, in th that is very um, perspective, uh, in my opinion. And uh, the idea is to give people some very practical tool to uh, help them uh, in front of the privacy uh, risk and challenges. And so with, this, with, with that kind of um, tool, we can uh, start the education. Uh, very success, uh, successfully, uh, because uh, education, um, as we can observe uh, um, since many years, uh, don't uh, gives us results, because still we quick uh, um, um, accept any rules and uh, jump to the ocean uh, and, and, um, and um, of our activity. And uh, that activity, it, it is uh, it's a subject of, of risk also, because finally the, the question and the problem is, where is uh, our knowledge? Uh, this is, uh, of course, I agree that um, the, uh, the company uh, um, uh, has um, big, uh, our data and create the knowledge, and this is asymmetric, but the, the key for future is to get, to, to bring the knowledge back to people. Because the knowledge, uh, it's an environment of creativity, and without creativity, we finally can lose our autonomy. This is our my my, my position even. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for answering my question and for for referring to the previous one. Yeah, I think this uh, this issue of the dopamine economy and the entertainment as part of very very crucial element of the of the IOB is, is, is very very important and worth mentioning so so thanks a lot and uh, Dominica once again it's your turn now okay thank you Maciek uh, well uh, I don't want to, to lose my autonomy uh, for this reason I must uh, ask um, about the future once again. And uh, well, uh, can the ubiquity of the Internet of uh, Behavior uh, make both consumers and users, uh, as well as uh, managers, uh, hostages of uh, solutions that determine our human uh, decisions, our human uh, behavior, uh, beyond which we uh, will not want or be unable to go? Uh, Zofia, uh, is it um, a real scenario? Um, um, I wish I can draw a very positive uh, um, picture because in general, uh, everybody who knows me knows that I'm very optimistic. But in this uh, case, first of all, I would like to make a kind of a statement to maybe uh, say something obvious that, uh, that we are experiencing um, a huge transformation in every part of our life, but also for the first time, 
we experience the transformation that is uh, touching also us as human. And maybe, even though it sounds uh, uh, a while ago as a more uh, science fiction today, we know that it's not, that actually we might be one of the last generations of uh, so far defined human. I also would like to answering your question, draw a bit wider picture. And uh, I see two vectors or maybe two forces that actually drive these uh, uh, phenomena or more or higher uh, pace of enslaving, enslaving people by the new technology. One of them is of course the race between the big tech companies and also the, the companies that we might, might even not know and they are in the, in the race. Um, the companies, uh, first of all, are in race because uh, they know that the pandemic speeded up the, the, the process, but also they know that some of the changes, regulation changes, ethic discussions are coming, that they are in the race, in my opinion, to lock even a bigger portion of the market, the population, in some kind of a, I would say, bubble or surrender them with some kind of a solution, uh, applications, uh, easy uh, one, uh, I would say, button, uh, solutions that will give them the promise of some uh, benefits, but actually it's locking them for making any exit or the way out, not only in the, in the case of the cost, because we see, uh, for example, the, uh, the strategy that it's already a long time taken by Apple or others. Uh, what's the big, uh, how big cost it is to change for the for other system, but also in the terms of the time consuming and uh, um, uh, all the easiness that it's so important for the people today in this speeding up world. So one uh, factor, but another factor for which we are always uh, drawing attention uh, already for more than a decade in the Humanities, uh, Humanities Institute, looking for the looking at the human being in the very complex and systemic way in the whole ecosystem in which a human is being born, raised, educates, and consumes uh, the media and the culture, uh, we see the, uh, the gradual downgrade of a human being. And this is very important factor because the human today is overstimulated. We know that the mental condition of a human being is very bad. One third of the population in the Western world is uh, actually experiencing uh, either depression or the growing loneliness. And uh, this downgrade is also uh, visible in, uh, let's say, the down uh, decreasing tendency of IQ coefficient in the recent years. Then it's also a symptom that shows that we are becoming actually dumber, if uh, I, can, uh, I can say. And more and more um, being... Uh, actually put in the place of uh, uh, being an um, impulse rather and being managed from the outside by the smarter and smarter algorithms then don't give us big, bigger space for a self-reflection. And actually we haven't been thought how to manage ourselves. I like to use the sentence that through the science for years we learn how to uh, live longer, but actually no one was teaching us how to live. Um, and uh, that's why in the recent years, we raised so many times the sense of life that it's uh, coming quite often. Why it's so important and it's correlated? Because if we are talking about this uh, weak condition of the human being, this means that the human doesn't have today much strength for living. And sometimes it's even this uh, becoming even weaker uh, uh, link and uh, being cooked slowly as this uh, um, frog and giving this sometimes deceptive promise for uh, some solutions that will ease their life and they go for it because they don't have the uh, internal power to uh, judge it, or sometimes they are not given even the time for 
uh, making the decision on their own. And they might not have strength for uh, taking the decision on, on their own. Um, the positive uh, and putting together these two elements, uh, what's the future? Then I would say that the positive element in it is the, the fact that we see some waking up of the conscious uh, consumer and uh, cons uh, more conscious user. Uh, we could see this waking up in, uh, in the, our research that we do as an institute. We also see this waking up on this uh, higher level of the managers of big tech companies. We could see in the recent years, for example, the Social Dilemma film where um, the top uh, managers coming from Google, Facebook, or other institutions, they were saying that they had this waking up moment of seeing this, uh, the, the, the flip uh, of, the, of the coin. Uh, then uh, I hope that the, the future is actually from going from two sides. One side is, of course, the more responsible uh, decision makers. Uh, and, the the second one? The current, uh, and the second one? And the second one? And the second one is um, um, uh, is growing uh, awareness of uh, of the users, and that's why in the Humanities Institute we um, uh, are taking the approach on both elements, working on this uh, coherence leadership uh, model, talking about the integrity, but also looking um, at the society through the whole ecosystem, as I said, through in which the okay. human being is uh, living. Okay, uh, Sasha, uh, this ecosystem is very important. Uh, I must uh, agree with you. Uh, Kinga, uh, do you afraid uh, of this uh, scenario uh, uh, when the uh, internet of behavior can be uh, the element uh, becomes uh, hostages of solutions that determine uh, our behavior? Uh, when you ask the person who deals uh, with marketing strategies every day, probably you will hear one answer, it depends. And the same is in this situation, because I fully agree with Zofia that we are, as a client, as a people, we are overstimulating. But on the other hand, we are searching for the information and we are addicted to the information and we want it. And we cannot live without the information. Of course, that we have some trends, and this is a, like a small a part of the of the clients that um, they uh, think that they are locked out, and they don't need any information. They are focused on uh, themselves, and they uh, think that they uh, live happily, and this in, this will be enough for them. But uh, like the, the development of the technology will be certainly a progress. And um, we cannot stop it. We can try, but probably we will not succeed. So um, that's why sometimes as a client and we are uh, unaware of how scanning of our behavior makes our daily life easier and allows us to make faster decisions, uh, more accurate choices, uh, if we are uh, hostages, probably yes, but sometimes the jail that we are living in is not so obscure and can be very comfortable, so it depends. It depends. Uh, okay, uh, much cool. the stage is yours. Thank you, Dominika. So another question is about values and about conflicting values, in fact. Uh, conflicts of values are quite commonplace in ethics, uh, including ethics of, of technology. So aren't we going to be forced to choose between very important values in the case of Internet of Behaviors, namely privacy over security or security over privacy? And we'll start with Zofia. Um. I think that, uh, as mentioned before, I think that uh, each of us on every level, decision level, will be more and more exposed to everyday decisions and the conflicts of uh, values. And I hope that also uh, uh, coming with it, um, self-reflection. Uh, and uh, that's why I mentioned uh, before that uh, uh, in Humanities, for example, uh, we still believe that it's not too late to wake up a human in human and we believe that human is something more than just uh, reason, brain, instinct, and algorithm. Um, 
in this coherent leadership uh, model, we show that the human has got physical, mental, emotional, and the spiritual zones. And uh, and that's why I think it's a very important discussion. Robert was mentioned it, uh, also before that, uh, that we are coming to the point where we have to raise it one level up and to the question uh, who actually, whom we define, who human being actually is. And, uh, and uh, that's why from this perspective, I believe that this is the, the first uh, very important uh, thing to, to mention. Uh, if someone would like to put uh, um, security over the privacy, we'll always find a reason to justify it, yes? And, uh, and uh, there is the, the question, we can always put the, uh, the very big picture that we will find one pocket picker in the big crowd of the people. But there's the question whether there is a need for hacking uh, 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 dozens of thousands uh, of people and collecting their data to save us from uh, from this one little, uh, let's say, uh, crime. We know also that uh, answering, uh, much coming to answering your question, I believe that in some areas, uh, we shouldn't choose either either. We can just make a decision that we don't make something, that we don't take certain decision. And we know that the European AI Act, uh, actually, uh, there are some areas that they are labeled as unacceptable. Great, thank you uh, for, for, for this answer. And the same question goes to Robert Kroplewski. Oh, thank you very much. It's a very uh, important uh, topic. Um, but before my, my uh, of answer, um, in my opinion, uh, that kind of um, dilemma doesn't exist. We need to choose two, privacy and security, but it's not at uh, the main layer. The main layer, it's a question zero related to the artificial intelligence. It's a question about the transparency. But trans, if we um, could develop and, and, and empower transparency, we uh, on the beginning need to define uh, what is it in, in, the, in the relation of internet of behave, behaving and uh, how we can uh, realize the right of information. This is the very constitutional value, right, on, 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 of information. But uh, finally, any conflicts uh, of values, like, for example, transparency, like privacy, like uh, cybersecurity, could be uh, shaped but, but by special compass, which we defined in the UNESCO uh, recommendation um, or on artificial intelligence. That compass, uh, it consists for, for, from uh, four elements, human dignity, well-being, no harm, and autonomy of people. And finally, that kind of four meta values um, uh, are uh, the super important to, to, to make a decision uh, on the layer of uh, cybersecurity, privacy, and, and, and so on. And from that perspective, um, uh, I still believe that um, that UNESCO work and uh, European Commission work and, and uh, Council of Europe work will be a benchmark for new privacy, yes, uh, related to the new world of, uh, of verse, of metaverse or Internet of Things or the, the, uh, our new bubble. And um, I believe also that. Um, in that kind of uh, framework, we need to use the diversity uh, as uh, also the um, element of creativity and empower of people. But uh, talking about the values and the, the conflicts, um, and especially in the topic Internet of Behaving, we don't need to forget about the SMEs and access of them to that big uh, data because um, um, that new model is invisible, as you um, much, uh, mentioned uh, on the beginning. And uh, in, in, if in the <laughs> special bubble uh, as the internet of behaving, um, uh, SMEs could neutralize uh, own business model, own, don't observe their uh, activity in, in that bubble, that will be very risky for the um, um, national economy productivity, finally. And uh, the, the fair competition uh, will, uh, could, uh, is under the risk uh, of being broken. 
And from that perspective, uh, um, we also suggest to, to um, realize some uh, new legislation. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you Robert, so if I can uh, just, uh, you know, quickly, because you said a very nice word, and we have these uh, great values, like the well-being or the autonomy of the people. But the main question is how to make them live, not just on the, on the paper, yeah? Yeah, the, yes. Of, okay, <laughs> one uh, sentence more, uh, how to do it. Firstly, define, uh, sorry, excuse me, maybe first is the conceptualization. Second, it's a define. Third, it's uh, to write on the paper. And a fourth element is to execute, to enforce that, that framework. Finally, without the tools, without the tools of measuring, without the tools of um, uh, enforcement, uh, we will be um, like a blind people and even blind governments and blind companies. The competition, um, on access uh, um, will be the, the, uh, the most important topic, uh, in my opinion, next year uh, among the companies and, and, and the centers of systems of, of economics among the China, among the United States, among the, uh, among the um, uh, European Union as a market also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all this, I um, only the only on all this won't work when the without the integrity of uh, of the leaders and decision makers. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Great, thank you, thank you, Zofia, thank you, Robert. We've got uh, ten minutes left, and it's the, the final question in this round uh, to everybody, to everyone. So the, the question is, the topic of the responsible development of technology is uh, getting more and more popular nowadays. But at the same time, the possibility of using consumer data to influence their behavior uh, also seems uh, really tempting. And uh, the question is, does the use of IOB in nudging tactics, which are in fact uh, some sort of behavioral steering towards the desired behaviors, the desired results, does it carry a risk of reducing human to, to mechanical reactions and thus limiting human, human freedom? Uh, what do you think? Let's, let's, um, let's start with uh, Katarzyna Palimoda. I think this is you know, very much related to what we just talked you know, a second ago, which is like, you know, there's no other way of you know, building all of that as a sort of like a framework where you know, core values are integrity, safety, and privacy. Now, we as a company might have it, not necessarily all our users might have. So we obviously need to you know, work and do our best to actually you know, keep, for example, our platform secure. Yeah, like, you know, in our case, we've you know, invested I think this year alone, we're investing 5 billion, which is you know, more than uh, our total revenue when we actually entered the stock exchange in you know, 2012. And then we have 40,000 people hired because you know, eventually AI on its own could not make it work entirely. Yeah? So we need to have both AI and you know, sort of like a manual, call it you know, human corrections to actually make it work. Now, that's definitely not the end and we'll ne definitely not get there to be you know, fully safe because you know eventually there will be a new and new tactics on how to um, go around with, you know that enforcement but then the idea is to simply obviously aim for perfection but you know from from the perspective of you know of, of the overall of the overall you know your question that's definitely the values and exactly what we discussed you know a second ago so from my perspective you know there's no other way of you know building it around you know integrity uh, safety and privacy Great, thank you so much. And the same question goes to uh, Katarzyna Samak. Thank you. So I fully agree with the company's perspective, although I would like to focus on the consumer's perspective here. So as you all previously mentioned, we all, as a, as a, as a human beings, we have one shared strategy, which is the cognitive saving. Yes, so obviously we are, um, we like very much uh, heuristics. We are doing all our cognitive bias. We are saving our mental energy. And when you have a shortcut, we're obviously using that. Yes, yeah? so this is why we definitely are in the information bubble. And the problem with the bubble is that bubble can double. So it means that here probably, uh, well, if something goes wrong with the, with the, with the, um, 
and government le legislation, uh, there still will be a space for companies to train us as a consumers, yes, and just to make this bubble smaller or larger and give us some, some sort of the um, do's and don'ts, yes. Uh, well, that definitely happens. I'm not that sure if we are facing a reduction of, of the human reactions, not at all. I think that, well, for example, social proof, yes, so all of the marketing based on the social proof or the, the celebrity endorsement, influence marketing, this is actually an improvement of human reactions, yes, but the, the thing is that, well, they are just being manipulated, yes, so the problem is somewhere else, I would say. Yeah, so here the, the the difference between the persuasion and the manipulation is very tight. Yes, in from definitional perspective, it depends on the on the level of the knowledge of the consumer, basically. Yeah, if he knows or he doesn't know that he is being uh, at some point um, manipulated, or he knows the, the rule of the game that he's playing with the company. And the thing is that, well, I, I probably come back to my first sentence I've said that the education here is the essence, yes. And even though company will give a space to say that, well, you will just be targeted because you click this and this, people still will be too lazy to read it, yeah, or not, uh, will not won't have enough uh, mental space to read it because they will be within the buying. Um, uh, purchasing a product or watching something interesting and they will just um, eliminate um, this, this information. Yeah? So this is something what we really need to carry on. And I think that, well, if there will be a common space, yes, for, for, for the business, um, then I, I think that, well, uh, we might uh, not maybe eliminate, but minimize the risk. And I very liked what, what Robert said before, that we are mostly talking about the large companies, yes, about large enterprises, but we cannot forget about the small businesses. Because obviously what happens and what used to happen in marketing before that, well, all of the tools that were used by the, by the large corporations finally are getting cheaper and being adapted by a small business, yes? And in small business, it is a bonanza at some point, yes? So it means that they, ha they don't have any... Uh, and departments of, of transparency and they don't have any department. They don't even have the knowledge about it, yes? So, so what, if we need to do something with that, we should do probably right now to develop, to create some clear and transparent rules and focus on the privacy and then it can be adapted and to, to smaller enterprises. Thank you so much. Uh, I've just got a message that we have only two minutes left. So I think uh, before we wrap up our conversation, I, I, I'll ask for, for answering this question, uh, Kinga, uh, but please put it in the nutshell, okay? Hey, uh, I will try to <laughs> do this very short way. Uh, being graphical for me, personally, is one of the most important ways uh, to uh, be on the market as a company. This is like the base for me, for my company. But also the moment that we start to treat our customer, our client as a numbers or just analytics or just a journey that they made, it means for me the end of the business. Like the customer is more. These are emotions that we should value, the emotions that we should build our strategies on. And uh, for me personally, um, manipulation is the worst way of creating uh, the business that we can imagine. So I would love our future market to be ethical and focusing on the client, especially uh, in this last two years that the client really needs us and they are reaching for the information and for the relationship with the, customer, with the company. So like, this is for me the future and I hope it will be like this. Thank you so much. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Uh, I don't know, Dominika, if you agree with that. I think we should finish our interesting yes. discussion. I'm afraid. Yes, uh, I'm afraid that we must uh, finish. And uh, at uh, the last, uh, I want. Uh, I will only say that it's worth to wake up human in human. And human, human is something human is okay. very, very important. Uh, well, I will be an uh, opportunity or a curse. You must decide uh, yourself. Thank you uh, very much uh, for your time. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to say, say that uh, just to try to summarize it, 
I, I think lots of interesting issues uh, raised today. And uh, one of the things I find especially important is, is this interconnection between raising awareness or raising uh, or, or uh, gaining some new kind of insight into how technology works and the proper education. So it's absolutely, absolutely crucial. But I also would like to add one thing that uh, we should be very careful when we are uh, implementing uh, technologies that can influence different aspects of our lives. So I do believe that the uh, approaches or methods developed within the um, AI community will also uh, disperse, you know, and uh, reach also those people who are responsible for developing new technologies. And saying that, thank you so much for being with us today. We would like to uh, name again and thank very much our, our experts today, namely Zofia Dzik, uh, Robert. My Kropot pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Katarzyna Paliwoda, Katarzyna Sanak, and Kinga thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to, to, to talk with you, to, to, to meet you today. And uh, thank you so much. My name is Maciej Hojnowski and uh, Dominika, uh, the, the, the floor is yours to, 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 to you know, end this meeting. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, well, it was a great pleasure to meet with you and discuss with you about uh, the IOB. Uh, well, uh, thank you, uh, every our um, uh, panelists and uh, every our uh, uh, <laughs> members of our seminar. Yes, uh, thank you very much and goodbye. Probably we don't finish, but we starting. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I hope so. That's a good conclusion. <laughs> thank you very much. Keep working. Audience and, uh, uh, all thank you so you. much. Thank you, our Let's viewers. educate, yeah. Yes, definitely. <laughs> See you soon again. Bye. See you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye.